Okay, hello. This lecture is about a very specific sort of computation, which your textbooks ask you to do a lot, and which comes up sometimes in real life as well, which is finding a formula for a to the n times w, where a to the n is some square matrix and w is some vector. And doing this using the ideas of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So here is the sort of problem one might have. Here's a matrix A, here's a vector W, give a formula for A to the N times W. So this sort of expression, a power of a matrix times a vector, we've seen some examples where this comes up. So for example, we had this problem about the club and the number of members in the club was given by the N at time N was given by the nth power of this matrix times the vector one zero. So that equaled old members at time n and new members at time n. So we've seen formulas like that come up from toy problems. And in your textbook, you'll see some other toy problems that make them come up. And they come up in models that people actually care about, not just in these sort of joking models, although those models are more complicated. And what we've talked about so far is that when you have a formula like this, for n large, this will be nearly parallel to the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue, it will multiply, it will um, grow exponentially with the base of that exponential being that largest eigenvalue. So those are things we've learned in the previous lectures. We've also learned how to compute eigenvectors and eigenvalues. That was the lecture before this one. But we haven't actually talked about how you do this particular computation. So here's a lecture just to cover that. OK, well, step one, find the eigenvalues. So this was in the previous lecture, and this is the same matrix as in the previous lecture. The eigenvalues are 3 and 2. We found those by computing the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Then we find the corresponding eigenvectors. We covered that in the previous lecture also. They are v1 is 5, 2, and v2 is 3, 1. And we found that by computing the kernel of a minus lambda identity. OK, so I've recorded that crucial information up at the top of the slide. Now let's get to the new stuff. The next step is that we express the vector w as a linear combination of the eigenvectors. So that means we need to solve these linear equations. And if you're a little confused about what's going on here, all I've done is I have taken in C1 times the vector V1 plus C2 times the vector V2 equals 11 equals W, which is 11, 4. And I've written it out component by component. So, so I am just writing W as C1 V1 plus C2 V2, and I'm writing that very explicitly here. Okay, so we need to solve these linear equations. I won't show you how to do that. You've been solving linear equations for two months now. The solution is C1 is 1, C2 is 2. And if you don't trust me, you can plug them in and check. And so then here we have this formula, which we've seen in previous lectures, a to the n times w is going to be c1 lambda 1 to the n v1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the n v2. Let's see what that looks like in our example. So c1 is 1. So there's an invisible 1 over here. Lambda 1 is 3. So this three went over here. V1 
is 5, 2. So that came from over here. And similarly, C2 is 2 times lambda 2 to the n. That's 2 to the n. And V2 is 3, 1. And then just to be completely explicit and unambiguous about what I'm saying, I have combined that into a single vector over here. So 5 times 3 to the n, 2 times 3 is 6 times 2 to the n, and so forth. And at this point, we've solved the problem. I'm going to say more, but this is a complete solution to the original question I asked. OK, now I'm going to say more. So let's go back. Let's go back to this moment on our slides where we need to solve the linear equations. I did it really in an explicit and elementary way to show you that it really was just explicit elementary. Let me go forward and do it in a more uh, abstract sounding way with matrices involved. So let S be the matrix with columns V1 and V2. And then if you look at these linear equations, these linear equations say S times C1, C2 should be the vector W. So C1, C2 should be S inverse W. And then if you look at this C1 lambda 1 to the n and C2 lambda 2 to the n, which appeared in our uh, previous formula, that's the diagonal matrix lambda 1, lambda 2 raised to the n times the vector C1, C2. And we just saw that C1, C2 was going to be S inverse W. OK, let's put it all together and get back to our final answer. We know a to the nw is going to be c1 lambda 1 to the nv1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the nv2. Um, we can get that by taking in the matrix S, whose columns are v1 and v2, and multiplying it by this c1 lambda 1 to the n, c2 lambda 2 to the n. So this S is contributing the v1 and the v2. And these terms are contributing everything else. And now, uh, plugging this equation in over here, we have an a to the nw is s, the diagonal matrix to the n, s inverse w. So I've copied over to the next slide the formula I just deduced, that a to the nw is s lambda 1 lambda 2 to the n, s inverse. The reason this works is because there's a deeper identity hiding here which is that S, which is that A is S for diagonal matrix S inverse. And this is an example of what's called diagonalization, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture.